Hey guys, it's been a while since the balance patch dropped and I barely had time to make this video. So let's talk about what changed in the last balance patch. The Hammer on Catalyst and Tempest got a 5% critical chance and condition damage increased and reduced the cooldown on Earth skill 5. So now, every time you complete a rotation loop, you will always find skill 5 on Earth ready to use. For Soul Beast, now Iboga Pit is better than Lynx, since it got a nice DPS buff to the Merged Pit skills in this patch. Now the F2 skill count as an Ethereal Field, which means if you use Dagger 3 or Warhome 5, you will get a Chaos Aura, and the chance on your shortbow projectiles will inflict confusion. After the new balance patch, the Vindicator can instantly generate 25 might stacks when entering combat, resulting in a fast bursting damage every time you enter combat to finish an event or to kill mobs. Blade Swan finally got the perfect relic to increase its damage by using the Relic of Paytha. For Blade Swan, Relic of Paytha increases your strike damage by 10% after using skill 5 while charging the Dragon Trigger. And with this patch, Anet reduced the cooldown of skill 5 Flicker Step from 40 second to 20 second. Mirage got a DPS nerf in this patch since Anet reworked the Illusion Membrane trait in the Chaos trait line. Now Illusion Membrane won't give a flat 10% condition damage increase and damage reduction. Now it will only give 10% condition damage increase while having Chaos Aura, which makes it hard to keep it up time. But here's the good news. With the new patch, Anet gave us a new relic called Relic of the Midnight King. With this new relic and strength sigil, Mirage won't need a staff to generate 25 might stacks. Now we can reach 25 might stacks and keep 25 vulnerability uptime by only using dagger ambush attacks. The second offhand weapon is optional. You can use either torch for DPS or a shield to block incoming attacks and generate protection. Now Mirage become even more easier than before and has better burst damage to kill mobs faster. The balance patch has changed the Berserker playstyle entirely. Now Berserker can stay in Berserker mode for a very long time, since the Smash Brawler trait now extends the duration of Berserker mode every time you land burst skills, and perma quickness from the heat the soul, since it has no internal cooldown in this patch. With these changes to Berserker, now we can change Aristocracy runes and relic to Trouble runes and Fractal relic, since we can reach 25 might stacks easily.
finally, Necromancer specs. Necromancer got a huge rework on the Curse's state line. Now we can have both Parasitic Contagion and Lingering Curse traits to sustain and get an extra 200 condition damage. And since we can't use Master of Corruption trait, we won't benefit from Blood's Power Utility skill to DBS. But the only reason we are going to use it is to keep the Might uptime. There is also a rework on Death Magic trait line. Now each stack of carapaces gives 10 condition damage up to a maximum of 300. So I tested it on a Scourge and Harbinger, but sadly the damage was low, since these two specs depend on Shroud skill 1 to inflict damage, so we can't replace Soul Reaping trait line. The only exception is Reaper. So let's start with Scourge and Harbinger. Scourge and Harbinger are now going to use Relic of the Midnight King, since this relic will help these two specs to keep 25 might stacks uptime, and because of that, we can go full offense on Scourge traits and use a Spectral Walk to remove conditions for Harbinger instead of Blood's Power, in case if you need more sustain. The damage result of these two specs increased with the new Curses rework and relic. Since the Curse's straight line rework, Reaper has three different builds that use the same gear and relic. The builds will use Chronomancer relic and four wills to keep quickness uptime and also to damage and sustain. The first build uses the Soul Reaping trait line to maximize the total damage if you are planning to solo bosses. And thanks to Variety Sigil and Will of Suffering, we can make up for the vulnerability loss since we changed the Spike trait line. The second build uses the death magic trait line for high passive defense and to compensate for lost damage since carapaces stacks in this patch give condition damage per stack plus perma protection. The third build uses the same old spy trait line. This version is good to use against trash mobs since it builds up the vulnerability instantly to 25 stacks to burst mobs faster. As you can see, the damage differences between the three builds are small, so it's up to you to choose which one you prefer to run. Personally, the death magic build was more comfortable to use, which allowed me to face tank attacks, to greet DBS and not worry about my HP.
Hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you have any more questions or you want to check all the builds details, make sure to join my discord and check the pinned messages in each individual class. See you later in the next one.